Chapter 2 Forest and Wildlife Resources Let's understand by breaking down the words and its meaning. A forest is a large area of land covered with trees or natural vegetation. And the word wildlife is referred to wild animals collectively. Finally, the meaning of resources is any stock or supply of money, materials, staff and other assets that can be drawn by a person, organization in order to function effectively. Here is a brief content put together which we will read in this chapter. So the first topic is flora and fauna in India. So the meaning of flora is plant community and fauna refers to animal community. Remember that. India is one of the world's richest countries in terms of vast biological diversity. So what this means is we have various species of plants and animals that are available in India. And that's why you see 8% of the total number of species in the world is found in India. So when we have such a huge number in our favor, it also means that these plants and animals also have a perfect place to live, which directly proves the fact that we have variety of forest resources in India. And due to these rich forest and wildlife resources, it is very important to understand that how these resources plays an important role in our daily life. For example, plants and animals provide so much to us human being. If we walk into the nearest supermarket or store, you'll see all the food items that are decked up on the shelf are because of them. So you do realize how important is that. And now that you understand that, you also need to understand these animals and plants are in great stress. And it is purely because of our insensitivity towards them. We are constantly diminishing the natural resources at a very fast rate. And it is not having enough time to replenish. The second topic is different categories of existing plants and animal species. Now there is an international organization called IUCN, which stands for International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. So what this organization does is they work in the field of nature conservation and sustainable use of natural resources. So the headquarter is based in Switzerland. Now as per them, they have a different categories of existing plants and animal species. So let's read about how they classify things. The first classification is normal species. So they are those species whose population levels are considered to be normal. Of course, I'm talking about their survival, which means they are not in a threat of getting vanished from the face of the earth. The second one is endangered species. So they are in danger of extinction, which means getting vanished from the face of earth. And we have heard a lot of time in the news about all these endangered species. And the reason behind their extinction is mostly due to human greed and other illegal activities. So some of the example of such species are black buck, crocodile, Indian wild ass, Indian rhino, lion tailored macaque, sangai and those sort of animals. And the third type of classification is vulnerable species. So by the term vulnerable means they are on the verge of getting endangered or getting extinct. So endangered means which is already in danger of extinction and vulnerable means on the verge of getting extinct. So vulnerable is behind endangered. So again some of the examples of such species are blue sheep, Asiatic elephant, Gangetic dolphin etc. And the fourth classification is rare species. So these species have to be in small population because the word rare means very few. So they also automatically fall under the category of endangered as well as vulnerable. Because if it is few then everybody's eye in the earth will be on them. So some of the examples are Himalayan brown bear, wild Asiatic buffalo, desert fox, hornbill. And the fifth classification is endemic species. So they are those species which are found in very particular areas that are out of human reach. I mean human can go if they want but usually you will not see civilization existing over these places. So they are usually isolated by natural or geographical barriers. And the last type of classification is extinct species. So the meaning of the word extinct is which are gone. You cannot find them anymore. So it may be a species which is extinct from a local area, region, country, continent or from the entire earth. And some of such species are Asiatic cheetah, pink head duck. So these were the six classification done by this international organization called as IUCN. They also have a website in case you are interested you can have a look at them. The link to the website is in the description below. So you can read a lot about their global programs, work and the kind of things that they are doing towards protecting and conservating nature and its resources. And the third topic is what are the factors that cause such fearful depletion of flora and fauna? Now it is a known fact that forest and wildlife provide unprecedented natural resources directly and indirectly to us. 
you know things such as wood parks leaves rubber medicines dyes food fuel fodder manure so we get a lot of resources from forest and wildlife having said that we also need to keep in mind that there is a cost associated with everything nothing is free so getting all of these natural resources at the cost of depletion of our forest and wildlife is something that we need to keep in mind now for example indian forest they are being damaged from long back it is not something that recently started it started during the colonial period due to the expansion of railways agriculture commercial and scientific forestry mining activities so to lay the tracks of the railway lines wooden plank used to be used which were directly been taken from the trees from the forest similarly for the expansion of agriculture a lot of the forest area was rooted out because we need a plain and flat land for agriculture now mining activities are very important for any country's economic growth but this activity also affects the natural environment very badly i mean to create a mine first we have to clear the forest and once the mining starts that is blasting and explosion all the wildlife of that area just vanishes quickly because they cannot bear the noise that has been created i hope you understand what i'm trying to say now there are some areas where tribal reside especially in the region of northeastern side and central india now in these areas the tribal communities perform something called shifting cultivation or jhum cultivation they are also called slash and burn agriculture so what they do is after growing a particular crop they burn that land and then they simply move on to another piece of land so this way they are actually damaging the soil content of that land now another degrading factor behind the depletion of forest resources are grazing and fuel wood collection so grazing means leaving the animals like cattle and sheep all alone in the forest area and they start eating and chewing all the vegetation part of the forest now that really affects the growth of the natural vegetation and fuel wood collection leads to deforestation because wood is an important material used for various purposes and to get wood we need to cut down many trees so deforestation occurs now we have other negative activities such as hunting poaching over exploitation environmental pollution poisoning and forest fires so these all factors are responsible behind the decline of india's biodiversity and the fourth topic is conservation of forest and wildlife in india conservation preserves the ecological diversity and our life support system so if you see there is an interaction among organisms and their environment so a lot of wildlife species depend on plant species for food and similarly we human depend on forest as well as wildlife for food now if there is no conservation policy we human are going to consume every ounce of it and then there will be nothing left for the future generation so many of you know that the food that we consume these days most of them are genetically produced and genetics is the study of genes so the scientists they create a little bit of modification and produce a different variety of a similar thing for example we can have a new fruit with a combination of two existing fruit and with the similar principle it is applicable on animals as well when we have this much of scientific advancement it is very crucial that we preserve the genetic diversity of plants and animal so one of the ways the indian government has shown interest towards preservation of wildlife and forest is by creating something called indian wildlife protection act which was implemented in 1972 so it was mainly towards protecting the remaining population of certain endangered species and this has led to the establishment of national parks and wildlife sanctuaries so the government has also announced several projects to protect animals which are on the verge of getting extinct such as the tiger then one horned rhinoceros the kashmir stag the crocodiles saltwater crocodiles and the ghadial asiatic lion black buck indian elephant and all those sort of animals so the main aim of these conservation project is towards creating a biodiversity for these animals and plants so that they don't face any kind of a threat especially from we human and the fifth topic is types and distribution of forest and wildlife resources to protect our forest and wildlife resources it is not at all an easy task because there is a lot of management and control that goes in and it is purely managed by the government through the forest department or other government departments and they have done a very fine classification let's go ahead and read about each one of them the first one is reserved forest so by the term reserved it is evident that that a certain piece of land is declared as forest reserve which means there is no other activity that can take place on that land you will only find forest over there and i think this is also the first step that any government needs to take towards protection of forest and wildlife resources then the second category is 
protected forest. So at first you created a perimeter and said look this is the forest or this is the land that is given to forest. And in the second approach you need to protect that forest because we as a human we can enter anywhere. So it is very important that certain places need to be protected and the forest department is actually doing that by declaring a particular forest as a protected forest so that there is no further depletion. And the third category is unclassed forest. So these are other forest and wastelands belonging to both government and private individuals and communities. So the unclassed forest is nothing but a piece of land with a little jungle sort of a vegetation and that exists behind the backyard of your village house or any community. Even in the urban areas you must have seen such places where you'll see a little jungle at a span of 1 kilometer or 500 meters that's it. And then again you'll see some houses. So these small small blocks of jungles that exist in urban areas these are nothing but unclassed forests. And they are sometimes wastelands also because we dump our all garbages in there. So these are the classification done by the forest department. And the last topic is community and conservation. Now we know that in India there are a lot of tribal communities that live in forest. The forests are like home to them. Quite frankly these tribal people they take a lot of hard work to protect and conserve the forest. At least more than the urban society. They are facing a struggle along with government officials in protecting the forest and wildlife from environmental threats like smuggling, encroachment, hunting, diseases, pollution etc. Actually it is a very difficult task to make every individual aware of the fact that protecting the forest and wildlife is a way towards securing their own long term livelihood. Nevertheless in many places villages are themselves protecting the habitat without the involvement of the government. One such example is in the villages of Alwar district in Rajasthan. They are declaring their own set of rules and regulations which do not allow hunting and are protecting the wildlife against any outside encroachments. Now we have heard about the famous Chipko movements in the Himalayas. This movement was created to shred some light on the destruction of forests. Though it was not a 100% success but we could see massive involvement of communities across the country towards environmental protection. Another good example is the joint forest management where local communities got together towards management and restoration of degraded forests. In fact forest management has been passed as a resolution in the state of Odisha. The lesson that we learn from all of this is that humans are the ultimate beneficiary of biodiversity. Therefore it is also our responsibility to keep it intact by preserving and conserving it for our future generations. And with this we have come to an end of this chapter. I hope you found this informative. If you enjoyed these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.